It's quite rare for a video game journalist to actually go forward and talk to their critics. And this is one of those rare times where a game journalist from a big website actually come forward to a public interview with someone that he criticized. So the story goes like this. Young Ya is a very popular YouTuber who makes very good content, really good reporting towards certain video game news. I highly recommend his channel. You should go and check him out. And he makes tons and tons of videos criticizing the video game industry's terrible practices, such as loot boxes, microtransactions, and many other video game related news. At one time, he made a response video to an article done by Jason Schreier who called him a YouTube provocateur. And the reason why he called him as such is because he makes videos with titles that are incredibly provocating. This is coming from someone who works at Kotaku, so yeah, take that for what you will. Here's a little bit of warm up before we actually get into the real deal of the conversation. I have certainly seen what your audience says. Right, no, of read course. But, you know, and consequently, your audience, when you, you know, Say, you know, the YouTube provocateur Young, yeah, consequently they come to me and say you're the Alex Jones of, of video game news, essentially. No, that's ridiculous. This is their plan, people. These are demons. When you make videos that have certain inflammatory titles, and then when they say certain inflammatory things, or even just ask questions that might come from a place of bad information, I think that winds up provoking people and stoking the flames of outrage in a way that I think is is can can be very dangerous. But I think when you're in a position when you're speaking to hundreds of thousands of people, doing that is the same as as as, as spreading misinformation. It's like saying uh not that I think you're anything like Alex Jones, but it's as if Alex Jones were on his video saying, I'm just asking questions. Was Obama born in America? We don't right. know. I'm just asking questions. Oh, yes. Yes, he went there. And before we go on anywhere in this video, I'd like to remind you all that you can support me on Patreon for just $1 a month. Link down below. Also, huge thanks to my new patrons, Kyle Russo, Samuel Fowler, and Demi Frost. You guys are fantastic. Now, Jason Stryer is someone that I'm not really a fan of. Even back in 2015, he's about as insufferable as he is corrupt. Did he really do any good investigative work? Absolutely. Does he have some seriously hot takes? Yes, he does. Here's one of them right after the interview. Most of the comments in this video are anti-Semitic alt-right shipbags, which I hope Young Yat thinks long and hard about, but this one is actually perfect. Okay, this tweet encapsulates everything wrong with Jason. He cares way too much about YouTube comments and straight up called the people who comments on Young Ass videos anti-Semitic and alt-right. I don't want to pull off the SJW card early on, but come on, Jason. And yes, that comment is really dumb, but so are many other YouTube comments. What's your point? Why should this comment be an issue? And for the record, this tweet has since been deleted. Gee. I wonder why. Anyway, when Young Ye said that he's about to interview Jason, I am about as excited as I am going, No, Young, you cannot argue with these people. They're really not worth debating on. And after I saw the entire interview, everything that I feared and predicted has come into fruition. But to be fair to Young, this isn't really a debate. This is more of a discussion, an examination in what Jason Schreier actually thinks. In that case, Young did a great job at exposing Jason Schreier and how dodgy and slimy he is. You might not be very good at challenging his point, but he is certainly great at exposing us to it. So let's get into all the points that he discussed because I think these points are very worth discussing. In this segment, Jason talks about Assassin's Creed Odyssey and its implementation of microtransaction. I think that gamer rage is a real problem and I think a lot of that is caused as a result of not being able to prioritize and not being able to see the difference between something like Assassin's Creed Odyssey where it's like okay this XP booster plants this idea in my mind it's kind of annoying I hate that it even exists which I totally agree with that versus uh Battlefront 2 where you have to pay more if you want to get good at the multiplayer at least before they removed all the microtransactions. This entire argument relies on whether or not you personally feel that Assassin's Creed Odyssey's microtransactions are bothersome. From what I've seen, people aren't too bothered by it as much, but it is still a good thing to warn people about its business model. Young made an entire video on this responding to Schreier about the microtransaction. Another thing that this argument relies on is Jason's personal thoughts on Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which he considered to be a masterpiece and Jason's empathy towards gamers, which is well, very little. You can boil down this argument in the Assassin's Creed Odyssey debacle into, I don't understand why people are mad. And despite Young giving him really good reasons why people are mad, or at least be concerned about his business model, he still talks about how unhealthy it is to get mad about things that he personally thinks people shouldn't get mad over. The issue is the lack of empathy and understanding towards the gaming community and his own personal bias towards the games that he's talking about. But to be fair to Jason, at least he admits the first part. 
art. I don't know. I, maybe I just feel like the rage is misguided. Mm-hmm. Maybe I just feel like the rage is is maybe I've gotten too old and I just don't understand <laughs> sure. why people can get so mad when there's uh-huh. so many great video games. Yeah, you're right, Jason. You are getting too old, and we will see it in the next 25 minutes. I think when you are screaming, when people are screaming, not necessarily. I'm I'm not going to name names here, but I think when there's this world when we're just shrieking constantly about everything, I think it just creates this poisonous discourse. It leads to um, just lots of toxicity. It leads to uh, game developers burning out. It leads to hardcore game players just not wanting to be involved anymore. It leads to less people taking it less seriously when there are real problems. It just causes a lot of problems. So his point here is that gamer rage leads into toxicity. Game developers burning out, hardcore gamers not wanting to be involved in the community, and it leads to people taking it less seriously when there are other real problems at hand. My question is, if this is a problem that we should talk about, that means that you are in some ways trying to get people's awareness to try to fix it, right? But unfortunately, due to the massive scale of the gaming community, there's no way for you to be like, hey gamers, stop being outraged about something. You can actually replace gamers with something else like, hey game journalists, stop being outraged about something. But my point here is that outrage from the gaming community is to be expected at pretty much everything these days. Yes, some of these outrage can be incredibly ridiculous, but from my experience, when the gaming population is outraged, it's mostly for the right reasons. Although I can't imagine someone like you saying that Sony's censorship towards anime games on PS4 is something to be outraged about, mostly because you lack empathy and you got your priorities wrong and you probably don't like these games. And if we're going to talk about outrage and not even once mentioning how your entire website is driven by outrage bait articles, I think you're starting to lose me. Yarn went on to explain that while the microtransactions in Assassin's Creed Odyssey aren't as bad as Battlefront 2, they're still not acceptable, and that would cause a lot of concern for potential buyers of the game. My points exactly. But Jason continues on his rant about gamer rage. When you say express anger, I mean, I think that's one of the real fundamental problems mm-hmm. with the game industry right now is anger and this rage that is just cultivated and instilled and is just so constantly ubiquitous mm-hmm. in the video game industry. This rage, this anger, like, oh my god, the $60 game that happens to be uh, one of the best Assassin's Creed's by far, like this incredible open world RPG that is like so well designed and full of interesting stuff and humongous. You can spend 200 hours playing this. It is... Uh, would you agree with me when I say that the video game industry right now and the quality of video games is as high as it's ever been? Okay, 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 stop, stop, stop. Topic switch, topic switch. So you guys might notice right there that Jason is a huge fan of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So anything that he said about microtransactions not bothering him personally, and anything that he said about how people shouldn't really get outraged over this, you should really take it with a grain of salt. Jason cannot put his personal bias aside to empathize with the common gamers and why they have problems with the business business model of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. His love towards the game blinded him to the issues that the game has regarding microtransactions, or at least it blinded him in why people have issues with it. And his next point? Oh boy, not even Young can take this. Would you agree with me when I say that the video game industry right now and the quality of video games is as high as it's ever been? For certain games, yes. For others... In general. I'm just saying in general. Jason, you know very well that it's a really bad question to ask, with answers that are not helping at all with the situation. Are the quality of video games right now is as high as it's ever been? Depends. Depends on which factor. Gameplay-wise, tech-wise, story-wise. We can't measure all these things at once, in general. The quality of video games are better technologically, but we all know that cutting-edge graphics and great sound engineering don't always make good games. That being said, I would still recommend Tokyo Zandu X Plus for its amazing soundtrack. My question is, what are you measuring the quality of video games on? We're at this point where video games are an incredible place. Their fidelity is amazing. uh, Their graphical fidelity, they're hitting all these artistic bars, yeah. yet at the same time, there's so much rage. That <laughs> that right there is where people would just straight up turn off the entire stream. Seriously? Video game quality is as high as it's ever been, and yet there's still tons and tons of outrage. We should just be happy for everything that video game industry throws at us, because hey, the technology is better than it was 10 years ago. We got cutting edge real estate graphics, we got virtual reality waifus, we got a high tech portable gaming system. The technology is as high as it's ever been for video games. We should just be glad and happy for it. This line of logic perfectly illustrates 
why Jason has little to no empathy or understanding towards issues that gamers face. Unfortunately, Jason, gamers are not from 10 years ago. If you tell me that I would own a PS4, two Nintendo consoles, and two gaming PCs to 10-year-old me from 2008, I would unleash the content of my stomach through my painfully small butt. The problem is, Jason, it's current year. I'm living in current year. We are living in the current year. My standards are current year. It's overkill for most people, but it's current year. Everyone's standards are current year, and as technology develops for video games, people's standards are developing as well. You can't just say, oh, games are better quality-wise and tech-wise than they were back from 2008. One, duh. Two, that's not why people are outraged towards video games or game companies as of late. And three, thank you, Captain Obvious. This is a factual statement whose main purpose is a red herring of the main discussion. To me, it's like looking at a game like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, it's $60. For $60, you are getting so much more mm. and so much a better game than so many of the things. Like if you look back, I don't know how long you have been following the video game industry, but if you look back even eight years ago, 10 years ago, mm. at the types of games that were being released for the same exact price, it is like, like beyond belief how much better this is in every way, quantity and quality, right? One, can you please shove your fanboyism towards a Sanskrit Odyssey up your butt for just a second? And two, none of this matters. You went above and beyond the original critique into saying, hey guys, games are much better these days. A take that I'm very sure a lot of people would disagree with, and for good reasons. This is a red herring of the actual discussion, and it only highlights your lack of empathy, understanding, and your willingness to engage in the actual points. So we're at this point where it's, it's, it's hard for me to accept that there should be rage about these things. Are you always this pathetic? Do you see what I'm talking about when I say that he lacks empathy? Okay, you want to get annoyed that this game is an XP booster? Fine. It's not fine though, is it, Jason? You want to get annoyed that this game has this annoying microtransaction and it's just like like should not be there it ruins the, the integrity of the game i i am with you there 100 percent. no you're not no you're not if you're with the gamers 100 percent, you wouldn't say that you don't get it you wouldn't went on tangent about how games are better nowadays than they were 10 years ago this entire thing wouldn't happen if you really are 100 percent with the gamers but carry on jason keep on lying but i think when you turn that into like i am now going to spend four hours a day in the comments on YouTube and Reddit screen or social media screaming at developers and just getting upset about every new controversy week after week. I think that is where you hit a point where, I mean, for me, it's incomprehensible. <laughs> You can even see Young's expression going, are you freaking kidding me? Even he, as someone who respects Jason, found that argument to be ridiculous. One, who spends four hours a day in social media screaming at developers for every new controversy every week? Two, who cares about them? And three, people wouldn't attack specific game developers unless if they are absolutely to blame on something. Most people would attack the company. There are instances where the outrage is stupid. For example, a bunch of Chinese players are review bombing Dota 2 because a player on e sports tournament is being racist, even though it's not Valve's fault. But I really need citations that are more credible than YouTube or Reddit comments, where people actually attack specific developers. Young then asks a legitimate question. Here's the thing. How do you change a, a circumstance like Battlefront 2 without an outrage? But then Jason brought up a really weird example. I think there are times when it is justify to go out and be like you know what i'm gonna start this this consumer movement together i think the xbox drm was a very good example of a way that a group of people who are really upset and want to stop something can mm -hmm. get together and do that the xbox drm that's from five years ago. It's really weird that the good example for a consumer outrage that you picked is from five years ago, when there are many consumer outrage controversies that are more recent than that in just the past two years alone, in the past week even. Hell, if you've been watching Young, yeah, it's happening almost every week. Why the Xbox DRM though? It's just a really baffling example to use. It just kind of highlights how out of touch you are with the times, really. I've looked at your YouTube comments. Like it's the, the level of discourse that you have is different than the the anger and rage and outrage and and just toxicity that I'm seeing expressed by people. Jason, remember when you say that your tweets are just stray thoughts that you share on the internet? First of all, a lot of this, uh, one of the problems here is that people just take tweets and assume that this is like, like they, they look at my Twitter feed and mm. look at one of my tweets and say, oh my God, this is like, this guy's chiseling his opinion in stone as mm. opposed to me just like 
like writing a stray thought and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. putting it out there. YouTube comments work the same way, except they are way less credible. I've looked at your YouTube comments. Like it's the the level of discourse that you have is different than the the anger and rage and outrage and and just toxicity that I'm seeing expressed by people. And I think that is a real problem. Whoa, 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 whoa! Like Stop right there, Jason. I'm legit asking you this, but. Are you from 2010? Saying that the toxicity in YouTube comments are the real problem is something that I expect from someone in 2010, not in current year. We have moved way past the point to consider YouTube comments as anything credible. This has been established probably even before 2010. I got way too many notifications on my YouTube comments. I ended up muting them. If I want to read a YouTube comment, I'll go read it myself. I don't have to read everything. I can't read everything. I have like thousands of comments per day. If I have to choose between reading all of my YouTube comments, YouTube comments and cleaning my room, I'd find more comfort and warmth being blasted by dust. Seriously, Jason, stop reading all these comments. They're just stray thoughts, except less credible. And to consider them to be the real problem instead of, you know, the game publishers using microtransactions and exploiting gamers, it just highlights how messed up your priorities are. Jason then went on to talk about how he has talked with people on the video game industry and how the gamers' outrage is one of the factors why people quit the industry. But here's the thing that baffles me when talking about game development. If you are a game developer, we can safely assume that you are consumers of video games as well. It would be really dumb to think otherwise. So if you are a game developer, especially in current year, especially when there are so many outrage and controversies happening towards big game companies every week at this point, you would at least have experienced what it's like to be a consumer when you voice your concerns or outrage towards certain video games. If you can dish it out as a consumer, but you can't take it as a developer, I think you're not qualified to be a game developer. You can't get too far in game development if you are not mentally well enough to handle criticism. No amount of depressing stories are going to change me from that opinion. If you cannot handle the criticism or the backlash of your product, you shouldn't be making a product. And one of the things that a lot of game developers or artists or producers in general miss is the fact that while their products are their passion project where they put their heart and soul into them, they're still made for consumption for other people. If people didn't like your product, they're not going to be very kind to you. Can this create a toxic environment? Sure. But on a plus side, this toxic environment of outrage encourages people to be better. Think about this. We're living in an environment where gamer outrage happens almost every week at this point. This is a factor that no one can control and nobody in their right mind would do so. It's about as hopeful as draining the ocean. So the question here is, as a game developer, do you complain about the toxicity that's happening in YouTube comments or social media in general, or do you teach yourself to adapt and grow, not just as a better person with a great mental fortitude, but also a better game developer? If you grow to be a better, more likable person who develops much better games, then the consumers would love you and respect you. There are still hate towards you, you can't remove them, but you can definitely reduce them. Let me put it this way, the internet is a post-apocalyptic wasteland. You can either complain about how everyone is hostile to you and wants to rob you, and then you get killed by a raider or something, or you can train yourself to be a better survivor. You can still get killed, but you have a much better chance of surviving. Anyway, with all that being said, let's get back to the actual interview. People just want to leave the video game industry, and that's not entirely because of this outrage thing, but outrage is certainly a factor. The outrage, I think, is very real and is a very real problem, and I think that's something that, that people like you and I need to be a little concerned about and think about when we are talking to people is like, what is this coming from? Is it necessary? What sorts of effects is it having on people? As I said previously, attempting to change the current state of the gaming community is a hopeless cause. This isn't an issue that people should be focusing on because you cannot change them. People are going to be outraged towards things every week. That includes me, that includes you, Jason, and that includes you people, the viewers as well. That is something that we cannot change. It's naive to think that we can. Instead of trying and failing to improve the world, we can, however, try to to improve ourselves. We cannot change how toxic the community is, but we can try to improve our mental health. We can improve our skills. We can improve our attitude. We cannot change the world, but we can change ourselves. We can be a better game developer. It's stressful, it's tiring, but that's just the reality of the situation. Ultimately, the power of your fate is in your own hands. It sounds like something that came out of an anime, but it's true. Then they talk about how game companies are terrible at communicating, and they both agree that they need better PR and better communication.
communication. I agree myself as well. And then Jason talks about YouTube videos. I do think that one of the problems is that a lot of YouTube videos are very much in like designed in a way where it's someone talking about things, sometimes talking about things they don't really understand, making guesses, maybe reading things they saw on Reddit, and kind of spreading this level of misinformation. And I think that's a real problem. I think you need to be very specific with that. Reddit and many other sources can be misleading as they can spread misinformation, but this is way too general of a characterization. Also, you're not in any position for criticizing other people for spreading misinformation when you work at Kotaku. Glass houses, Jason. When you say that you're angry, I find that really interesting because uh, didn't we just agree that video games are in this great place? I mean, I, I, I get you. Like <laughs> Young expression is amazing. He's like, dude, are you kidding me? This ain't it, chief. This ain't it. And here's the best part. Here's the best part. Jason went on to talk about EA's conference and then he said this. That they feel like they're designed for investors. But mm -hmm. I mean, that is like, uh, <laughs> that is a capitalism problem. That is a publicly traded company problem where these executives at the right. top are making. Right. <laughs> Oh, I should have watched this instead of listening to it. Young is very visibly annoyed. He's struggling to go, good God, Jason, are you kidding me? What are you on about? Young doesn't challenge him that much throughout the discussion, but that reaction is a good enough response. I'm convinced that deep down below his respect and admiration towards Jason, he's like, oh my God, this dude is dumb as bricks. When you say that you're angry, I find that really interesting because uh, didn't we just agree that video games are in this great place? I mean, oh I, I, fucking I, I, hell, where do I even begin? Here's also my favorite reaction. I think we should just turn this reaction into a gif. But for me, I mean, I find it hard to get angry about these things because I'm looking at my Steam. That reaction just screams, well, damn, I really can't get to this guy's head. You know what? I'm just going to ask him questions and let him talk. And that's exactly what happened for the next hour actually we've been through 20 minutes of the debate and i don't want to get through every detail so let me sum it up the next part young and jason talk about diablo immortal jason once again shows his lack of understanding and why people are angry he tells people that he shouldn't take his twitter seriously but this is coming from someone who takes youtube comments seriously so there's that i do think that it's important to look at these things and to wonder like hey how did these decisions get made why are these yeah, decisions sure. getting made how can i advance the conversation in a productive way mm -hmm. um and i don't think the answer to that is the sheer rage and posting in your youtube comments about cucks and sjw's and all the other things that i have seen yeah it's, well it's, yeah you did call people alt-right and anti-semite as young yeah beautifully said wow what a great start sure just go right ahead and generalize and dehumanize anyone who doesn't stroke your ego by calling them trolls neo-nazis and bots i'm sure people will take you much more seriously now i hear people who are talented experienced game developers saying what am i doing like why am i working mm -hmm. for these people who seem to hate me why am i working for these people who seem to hate me the answer is simple people don't love you by default they are indifferent to you by default that is the wrong question to ask the right question to ask is what have i done to make these people hate me and since your example is why a chang the guy who announced diablo immortal i think we all know where this hate is coming from before this jason talked about how wyatt worked so hard on the game and that he doesn't deserve all the hate that is true a lot of these dumb moves that blizzard made are thanks to them trying to please activision i mean seriously what the hell is this activision but i'm going to say what i said in my extra credits video your teacher doesn't care if the dog ate your homework or you broke all the bones in your body as you're working on it if the homework is c grade at best you will get a c grade or probably worse these consumers are like your teachers grading your assignments they're brutally honest and they're not gonna shy away from giving you a c or a d or an f even if your end result is subpar in terms of the relationship between the developer and the consumer the gaming world is a really brutal world the crunching and the overwork are just adding more insults to injury and there are definitely lots of rooms to change in that department i've talked about this in another video but what will never never change is the relationship between developers and consumers. In the end, your consumers are indifferent to you. Why would they care? 
They only care about the games and whether or not they're good or fun to play. Crunching and overwork? That's a problem and we need to find ways to fix it. Consumer backlash? Sorry man, these consumers are not gonna pull walls over your eyes, they're not gonna cover your butt, they're gonna be brutally honest about your product. It's just how the world works and you either deal with it or you quit. I'm not saying that Wyatt is entirely responsible for Diablo Immortal, I'm just saying that the world of gaming is a pretty harsh place. And yes, I agree with Jason that the gaming community can be pretty damn toxic. I just disagree that it's the real issue that people should be focusing on. Again, it's a hopeless cause and you're wasting your energy trying to fix this entire thing. There's a reputation and there's a feeling um, for but like whether this is true or not, but there is a feeling among the people who make video games that they are making games for an audience that detests them and is just looking for any reason to watch them fail. That's a very pessimistic viewpoint. Audiences do not detest you by default. That's ridiculous. And they certainly don't want to see you fail. On the contrary, they want to see you succeed. My viewpoint is a lot more pragmatic in that audiences are indifferent to you. It is possible to earn their love and trust. You just need to have something to offer. And people who complain about this usually don't have much things to offer in the first place. Successful game developers just make their games and put their heart and soul into them. Other game developers? Just whine and whine. I think that mm -hmm. that's something that people like you could do to alleviate that is to make sure that everything that you say and I say and all of us say who mm -hmm. are in these positions mm -hmm. where we have platforms is comes from a place that is accurate and true and fair. Unfortunately, all of those things are very loosely related to Kotaku. Jason then went on for about five minutes talking about himself actually. He's mostly pissed that people don't really like calling him shills of certain companies. I wouldn't call you those either Jason, but I would call you a shill for Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Your fanboyism of that game is beyond the levels of rationality. So we've been 30 minutes throughout this one hour interview and I think we don't really need to go on any further. They went on to talk about Diablo Immortal, Fallout 76, Bethesda's buggy game engines, game of the years, and I was laughing pretty hard when this part popped up. So let me ask you something young. Have mm -hmm. you ever reached out to Bethesda and said hey I would like to talk to to Todd Howard about this stuff. Well, would he? I mean, I've reached out to you know PR departments, but you know what? What they're not? They're not gonna. Why would they let me speak to Todd Howard? Why not? I don't know. You a, yeah, because you have a YouTube channel. You have a popular YouTube would you, channel. Would you I be mean, able to connect me with him? And I'd, I'd love to no, speak with him. No, because Bethesda hasn't talked right. to him in five years. They, oh so. yeah, well there you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But, Oh boy, if you guys don't know, the reason why Bethesda doesn't want to talk to Jason or Kotaku in general is because he leaked all of their stuff on Fallout 4. He also leaked on so much stuff on Assassin's Creed Syndicate, which is also why Ubisoft doesn't want to talk to them. One of my very first few videos in 2015 was talking about exactly that. Like seriously, here are some details about the game. Don't leak them. Then Kotaku leaks them. And then they're somehow surprised that these game publishers don't want to talk to them. And that's Jason Schreier and Young, yeah. A game journalist with a YouTuber. In reality, it's just the game journalist talking and the YouTuber reacting to the hot takes in a hilarious manner. The only conclusion that I can get from this entire thing, and it's something that we already know at this point, is talking to game journalists is indeed a very silly thing to strive for. Isn't that right, Jason? Or is it about being a good journalist?